What is the real story of the dodo bird's extinction? The dodo, or didus, is a bird that lives on some of the islands in the East Indies. Charlotte Turner Smith wrote this in A Natural History of Birds, primarily for children in 1807. Its past is unknown, but if the description of it is accurate, it is the ugliest and most repulsive of birds, resembling one of those chubby, ungainly people who, after a long period of terrible and heinous indulgences, have become a slur on the human form. I hate to say it, but the dodo appeared to be an endangered species. What other outcome could have been possible for a ground pigeon with such a silly appearance? Raphas Kukulaus had the appearance of a bird that was standing motionless and staring blankly, while the scythe of extinction lopped off its head. It was a hideous tubby creature with enormous nostrils and an absurdly small poof of tail feathers. But the dodo I've always known isn't a true representation of the bird. The creation of this symbol of extinction involved the use of notes, pieces of skeletons, a disregard for the anatomy of soft tissues and some artistic license. Because of our efforts, the dodo appeared to be so foolish. The fact the birds didn't flee from people instead of becoming comfortable among them supports this theory. People might conclude that dodo birds lack survival instincts and cannot flee danger after learning this information. The real reason they didn't though is because these birds had never had to flee from people before. Before the soldiers arrived, there were no predators or carnivores on the island, according to Smithsonian Insider. Dodo birds believed the island to be so secure that they lost their ability to fly. Before we proceed, kindly return the favor and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and activate the bell notification feature to stay up to speed with new video publications. A brief history of the dodo's extinction is necessary to comprehend its legacy. Only approximately three centuries have passed since we last saw the dodo, but it has been challenging to pinpoint the exact time. The last known sighting of a dodo on its native island of Mauritius was recorded in 1662. Although David Roberts and Andrew Solo estimated in 2003 that the bird went extinct around 1690, they probably weren't too far off. Dodos were killed on August 16, 1673 for the opera hoof governor of Mauritius Hubert Hugo according to historical records recounted by Julian Hume, David Martel, and Christopher Duny in 2004. Between 1685 and 1688, Hugo's successor, Isaac Joan Lamodius, also made entries in his journals concerning dodos that were still alive at least 12 times with the final catch being noted on November 25, 1688. Lamodius is believed by some historians to have been referring to the Red Rail, which is also extinct. However, Hume and co-authors pointed out that Lamodius was an expert naturalist and was unlikely to have confused the distinctive dodo with the Red Rail. Using these late sightings and the estimation methods of Roberts and Solo, the scientists came up with a new extinction date of 1693. However, we will likely never know when the last dodo died. The people who exterminated the dodo did not keep meticulous records of the bird's fall for more than a century before the concept of extinction was acknowledged. The idea that an entire species could vanish simply did not cross their minds. The dodo was exterminated due to a combination of factors. Of course, humans hunted the innocent birds, but the rats, cats, pigs, and other creatures we brought with us were just as noxious. The dodo's extinction involved more than just a programmatic wipeout. Many unique island species were unable to adapt to the significant ecological damage that our species caused. Nevertheless, the fact that dodos were frequently hunted and killed considerably contributed to their extinction. Jan Den Hengst has drawn on a number of historical sources to demonstrate that, contrary to popular opinion, dodo flesh was seen to be fairly appetizing by sailors. Who knows how many dodos were slaughtered in order to appease our appetites? Fortunately for us, but not the dodo, some of those ravenous sailors documented some facets of the bird's natural history. Why then are there so many incorrect restorations when the Dutch colonists on Mauritius observed the dodos, took notes about them, sketched them, and even brought stuffed dodos back to Europe? We're not dealing with some extinct animal from the Pleistocene that survived only as drawings on cave walls. From a geological standpoint, the dodo only just vanished into oblivion during the Age of Exploration. Therefore, it is perplexing why an animal that vanished so recently has been so inadequately depicted. Mistakes concerning the dodo frequently include plagiarism. One of the artists made a mistake and it endured. Consider the dodo's hue, for instance. According to eyewitness accounts, the birds had black to gray plumage, although some 17th century Dutch artworks depicted them as white. Why this happened is uncertain. It's possible that dodos were accidentally painted to resemble the white ibis of Ronian Island, 
another extinct bird, or that an albium of dodo was duplicated more frequently than others because to its distinctive coloring. Whatever the reason, the dodos of light color persisted. Even more potent an impact was made by a single Roland Savory painting. In contrast to prior depictions of dodos as long-legged and spry birds, his painting of the dodo made about 1626 it depicts the dodo as a chubby, stumpy bird. It is hardly unexpected that succeeding artists followed Savory's pattern even though travelers to Mauritius have previously depicted live dodos in more elaborate, stylish, and detailed paintings. Even the famous Victorian anatomist Richard Owen later utilized Savory's illustration as a starting point when reassembling the bird. But we can't be too harsh on Savory. Only two tales of live dodos being on display in Europe are known to be accurate, and Savory is unlikely to have witnessed a dodo that was still alive. The majority of illustrators who depicted the bird had never seen a live one. The expanded nostrils and artistic representations of the bird are at least one telltale evidence of this circumstance. However, in skeletons and stuffed specimens, the soft tissue was gone, leaving the nasal cavity open and looking comparatively wide. Drawings of live and recently deceased birds depict the nostrils as being very small. Large gaping nostrils indicate that a dodo restoration was based on a long dead specimen. Dodo anatomical misconceptions developed a cultural inertia that was challenging to reverse. Dodo pictures were heavily re-examined by dodo specialist Julian Hume in 2006 and were based on shabby scraps and the works of others. At least the Pleistocene artists who drew mammoths, rhinos, and Irish elk on cave walls had seen the living creatures. In the case of the more recently extinct dodo, the distance between the artists and last birds allowed errors to take hold and quickly proliferate. Strangely, the dodo, after being extinct, became to resemble a mythological creature. Despite the bird's fame among the Dutch, many French naturalists believe it to be wholly fictitious, according to Samuel Turvey and Anthony Cheek. The dodo was about as real to some 18th century naturalists as a griffin, and there didn't seem to be any solid proof that the bird had ever existed. Given that there was no evidence of the dodos when the French acquired possession of Mauritius in 1710, it appeared probable that the birds were the result of exaggeration and hyperactive imaginations. It wasn't until the early 19th century, when European naturalists started reporting fragments of dodos that were dispersed throughout different museums, that it was widely acknowledged as a real animal that had just recently vanished due to the actions of our species. Both chance and necessity played a part in the dodo's rise to fame, Turvey and Schick noted. The dodo only became symbolic of extinction when more recent extinctions, such as that of the Great Auk in the mid-19th century, affirmed that species truly could undergo a catastrophic decline. Of course, the Dodo's appearance as an icon of political foolishness in Alice's adventures in Wonderland helped. Even though many facts about this peculiar bird are still unknown, scientists operating today know more about the Dodo than naturalists who worked during the same period as the final birds. How much the Dodo weighed was one of the annoyingly vague queries. Here, the estimates produced by scientists and the notes of eyewitnesses disagree. Scientific calculations based on the dodo's bone anatomy have restored them to weigh between 23 and 46 pounds, contrary to some seafarers' claims that they may weigh as much as 50 pounds. The larger estimate is in line with the chubby, waddling species seen in paintings from the 17th century, while the lower estimate corresponded to older tales of slender, long-legged dodos. Dodos may have fallen slightly short of the previous lower limit according to a report recently published by Delphine Angst, Eric Buffetot, and Anik Aberachid that analyzed leg bones from the femur to the ankle to estimate the mass of the bird. Dodos weighed only 22 pounds on average. The scientists hypothesized that the heavier estimates of the mariners of the 17th century may have been influenced by the inflated appearance of some birds and a little exaggeration, since this is roughly the same weight as a wild turkey. We need additional bird remains, though, in order to fully comprehend the dodo. Despite the numerous dodo skeletons that have been transported back to Europe in preserved form, researchers have only occasionally gotten access to whole skeletons. The meager collection of dodo remains made in the 17th century was lost, destroyed, and reduced to dust. According to a well-known piece of historical lore, the last remaining stuffed dodo in Oxford's Ashmolean Museum had deteriorated to the point where a fire was ordered to destroy it. Only thanks to the prompt action of a quick-thinking naturalist were the head and foot spared from the flames. However, this is incorrect, much like many beloved myths. The dodo's head and foot had to be removed by the museum's curator since the rest of the mount was so badly corroded that they couldn't be salvaged. 
Richard Owen conducted the initial scientific analysis of a full dodo skeleton in 1866. Despite the fact that Owen's theories were debatable for two separate reasons, he had created a replica of the dodo's skeleton, using the sub-fossil remains of numerous individual birds discovered on Mauritius. From an anatomical standpoint, Owen had presumed that Savory had taken inspiration for his painting from a real bird and had only reassembled the bones to fit inside the artist's depiction of a chubby dodo. However, Owen's capacity to reconstruct the bird at all was made possible by his hijacking of fossils intended for naturalist Alfred Newton at Cambridge. Owen later published an updated, more upright version of the dodo skeleton in 1872. Owen's stake in the dodo forced Newton to grudgingly bear his throat by allowing Owen to become the primary interpreter of yet another amazing extinct creature. Newton did this by giving Owen the best dodo fossils he had in his hands and by withholding his own work on the dodo from potential publication. It is understandable how the classic perception of the buffoonish dodo remained entrenched in the absence of any new bones or stuffed specimens, but recent expeditions to Mauritius have uncovered new fossils of the bird. The most complete dodo skeleton ever discovered was reportedly collected from a cave deposit in a 2007 study while a 4,000-year-old bone bid that was abundant in dodo remains was detailed in a 2009 publication by Kenneth Ridgedick, Julian Hume, and colleagues. This website has provided a brief insight into Mauritius' past, long before the Dutch sailors arrived. The same deposits, which have been recreated as a freshwater oasis in an otherwise arid area, also contain numerous dodo skeletons, extinct giant tortoises, bats, and other bird bones. The buildup was the product of numerous centuries of recurring droughts killing the species that depended on this water source, not one cataclysmic occurrence. But this is only a fleeting moment in the dodo's history. It is unknown how long its history dates back and how it first evolved. It is almost simpler to think of the dodo as a fossil animal despite its closeness to us in time. What we believe to be true about it was mostly based on the testimony of long-dead witnesses. We can only begin to comprehend the biology of this bird by looking back at the dodo's bones. The dodo is an unmistakable symbol of extinction, a species that was nearly exterminated, but it is nevertheless difficult to divorce the animal from its contemporary mythology. Can the dodo be brought back? In an ambitious endeavor that would make use of developments in ancient DNA sequencing, gene editing technologies, and synthetic biology, a group of scientists now aims to bring the dodo bird back. They anticipate that the initiative will lead to innovative approaches to bird conservation. There is no doubt that we are experiencing an extinction crisis, and it's our duty to tell people tales and create excitement in a way that inspires them to consider the current extinction issue, according to Beth Shapiro, an ecology and evolutionary biology professor at the University of California, Santa Cruz. Lee paleogeneticist Shapiro works for Colossal Biosciences, a biotechnology and genetic engineering startup company that was founded by tech entrepreneur Ben Laham and geneticist George Church of Harvard Medical School. Colossal Biosciences is engaged in two equally ambitious projects to bring back the woolly mammoth and the thylacine, or Tasmanian tiger. Shapiro said that using genetic material taken from dodo bones in Denmark, she had already finished a crucial first stage of the endeavor by thoroughly sequencing the dodo's genome from ancient DNA. The genetic material was then compared with the Rodri's solitaire, an enormous flightless pigeon that previously resided on an island near to Mauritius and the extant Nicobar pigeon, two of the dodo's closest avian cousins. They would be able to focus their search by determining which genetic changes make a dodo a dodo, according to Shapiro. Programming cells from a living dodo relative with the lost bird's DNA will be a much more difficult task once the animal has been brought back to life. Shapiro said she plans to modify a method that has already been used to produce a chicken fathered by a duck using primordial germ cells, the embryonic forerunners of sperm and eggs. She stated that the method entails taking primordial gem cells from an egg, growing them in a lab, and then altering the cells with the desired genetic features before putting them back into an egg at the same embryonic stage. The scientists won't be creating a carbon copy of the dodo that existed four centuries ago, but rather a modified hybrid form, even if they are successful in this risky quest. The development of these synthetic biology technologies, according to Shapiro, will have broader consequences for the conservation of birds. The methods might enable researchers to transfer particular genetic features between bird species in order to safeguard them as their habitats get smaller and the environment gets warmer. This method, which is effective with hens, 
It would be incredible to get this to function in a wide variety of birds throughout the bird tree of life, since that would have a significant influence on avian conservation, said Shapiro. Maybe we can use these tools to transfer the even between closely related species, she continued. If we find that there is something that provides immunity against a disease that's hurting a population, and you know what the genetic changes underlying that immunity, or that ability to fight off that disease is. His work involves converting commercial egg-laying hens into surrogates for rare chicken breeds revived from frozen primordial germ cells. Mike McGrew, a senior lecturer and personal chair in avian reproductive technologies at the Rosslyn Institute at the University of Edinburgh, described the project as a moon launch for synthetic biology. The concept is that you must now be able to use pigeon species, and that's the huge difficult part, jumping from chicken species, which many labs across the world do, to other bird species, Sim Grew, a member of Colossal Scientific Advisory Board who is not directly involved in the Dodo research. I've been attempting to cultivate germ cells from other bird species for nearly 10 years. It's difficult, he remarked. Investors are interested about de-extinction projects and the potential technical advances they could lead to regardless of whether Colossal and its team of scientists are ultimately successful in their mission to bring the dodo and other extinct animals back to life. The total amount of cash raised by Colossal since the company's start in 2021 has reached $225 million, according to the company's announcement of a further $150 million in funding. According to Scientific American, there would likely be a lot of challenges for the company, such trying to emulate the behavior of the birds. According to a researcher at the University of Copenhagen who discussed the problem, nobody can train a dodo bird to behave like a dodo bird because we don't actually comprehend their true nature. Another challenge is the fact that the world has changed dramatically during the past several hundred years. It's impossible to predict whether the birds would survive even if they were to be restored. But we can never predict what the future holds, perhaps dodo birds will soon be able to fly without any restrictions. And now, let us hear from you in the comment section below. Keep in mind that more videos will be up soon, so be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell in order to stay up to date with new video alerts. Also, sharing indicates you want to see our content reach a wider audience. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.